What are the craziest things that the ancient Imperial China did? We've gathered the top 10 most unbelievable facts that we're going to present you with straight away. Are you ready to be amazed with the country that led the world with its inventions? In case you didn't know, the ancient Chinese discovered paper, porcelain, and gunpowder. Are you fascinated already? Well, wait until you hear all the rest. Let's go. Number one, Quan Shi Huang's tomb. When we think of tombs, we usually think of something that's completely claustrophobic and in no way lush. Well, that's probably because we're not emperors. Quan Shi Huang, the first emperor of the Qin Dynasty, built a tomb that was close to 40 square miles. Yeah, we can repeat that. To be precise, it was 38 square miles, the tomb. Not only that, but to make sure nobody would open the tomb after his death, they poured toxic mercury in little rivers all around the body. Up until this day, the tomb has not been opened, naturally. And as a Chinese historian had written, the site includes three streams and his coffin is encased in a bronze sarcophagus and the floor of the central burial chamber floats on rivers, lakes, and seas of mercury. The vaulted ceiling is inlaid with pearls and gems to emulate the sun, moon, and principal stars of the constellations in the night sky. Whale oil lamps are brightly lit for an everlasting effect of illustriousness. Number two is Siban. Hajin, otherwise known as Siban, was a policy that forbid sea trade when both the Ming and Qing empires were in power. The Siban was a series of anti-trade and isolationist policies that made sure to eliminate foreign interference and piracy. Needless to say, people were not very happy about this. Opposite to what they wanted to achieve, the ban made sure that both smuggling and bribery were well on the rise. The foreign trade was limited to only very expensive so-called tribute missions, and to top it off, the Mongols' military started pressuring them to a boiling point. They managed to scrap a lot of Chinese fleets. It seemed like the initial reason that the sea ban started was not only to fight the piracy, but also to push the Japanese to realize how much they needed the Chinese products and be more open to negotiation. Well, that just didn't end very well. Hey, how are you holding up so far? You know, if you subscribe and leave a comment that says, I subscribed, I'll personally reply back to your comment. And what are you waiting for? Leave that comment and let's continue because the best is yet to come. Number three, Yongle Emperor and his two giraffes. It's no secret that giraffes were a very weird animal throughout the centuries and people loved to watch them and talk about them. In the 1400s, Emperor Yongle thought that a giraffe was like a unicorn, like a mythical creature that was highly admired by all who knew of its existence. And coupled with the Yongle Emperor's love for exotic animals in general, he had ostriches, peacocks, parrots, even elephants and rhinoceroses. It's no wonder that two giraffes managed to be part of his entourage. He obviously treasured them highly as it's the only animals who he asked a court artist to paint. Number four, Su Wen. It is still widely known that William Harvey's 17th century De Motu Cordis e Sanguinis in Animalipus, did I get that right? It's the first accurate description of the circulation of the blood. But the ancient Chinese people would not agree with this very much. The reason is that in the Chinese medical treatise Su Wen, the circulation of blood is actually described pretty accurately. The Su Wen was written in the second century, so you might say they were a bit forward. Apart from the circulation of blood, the Su Wen also covered the circulation of qi or qi, which translates as something like vital energy. Got your qi on? Well, we're in the middle of the video, so it's the perfect time to remind you, if you haven't already, please check out our channel because man, we've got so many amazing top tens over there. We can keep you entertained for hours and hours on end. And while you're there, you want to subscribe. You want to turn the notifications on because you don't want to miss one of our newest videos. All right. Are you ready to continue? I'm ready to go. Let's go. Number five, new shoe. That's what you get at the shoe store. No. What would you say if you were told there was a secret language in ancient China that only a part of the population knew how to use? Pretty cool, you know, like, yeah. What if we told you that this part of the population were actually only women? All right, that's seriously cool. Too cool for school. Cool as a cucumber. 
All right, we'll stop. Nushu means women's script, and it was exactly that, a secret language that Han, Yao, and Miao women would use to express their thoughts to one another without being afraid. It's believed it started over 30,000 years ago around the time of the Shang Dynasty, where women were denied education. The most amazing thing is that the secret only came out in the 1980s. How they kept that a secret for so long is only something that amazing women know. Number six is Enoch system. Enochs throughout history were men that had been castrated, usually as punishment, and they were not all that highly appreciated. Well, that was definitely not the case in the Forbidden City, where most men were Enochs and held high positions, like spies for the emperor or workers in the emperor's harem. They weren't considered a threat to the emperor's bloodline because they couldn't have any sexual relationships with a woman, thus they couldn't produce heirs. Well, during the Ming Dynasty, there were more than 70,000 Enochs serving at the imperial court, but their numbers were quickly reduced after because they started holding a lot of political power. Number seven is the worst poet. The Quanlong Emperor was very famous, but for a reason we're not sure he would cherish. The Chinese had wonderful poets, and they were famous in their times, and lots of emperors were also skilled in verse. That was not the case for the Quanlong Emperor, who was one of the longest living monarchs, reaching the age of 88. Even though he wrote more than, get ready, 43,000 poems in his life, but all of them were, well, awful. I mean, terrible. Y you want us to prove it? Okay, here we go. Here's one of his poems about snow. Are you ready? This is really good. One piece, another piece, and another piece. Two pieces, three pieces, four or five pieces. Six pieces, seven pieces, eight, nine pieces. All fly into the flowering reeds and disappear. Yeah, that was it. Well, we made it to the top three. Are you ready to see if we kept the best for last or are you waiting for more snowflakes? Because we're gonna let you in on a little secret. We did save the best for last. Buckle your seatbelts, kids. It's going to be a good ride. Number eight is coins on strings. The Chinese had a strange habit of putting their coins on strings and carrying them around. The technique even got its own name as a string of cash coins, and it was considered a currency unit. There was a square hole in the middle of the cash coins, which allowed men to pass a string through them and then pass more coins onto it. During the Ming and Qing dynasties, the strings of coins were called Chuan or Dayom, while prior to the Song dynasty, they were called Guan. When they had to make a large payment, they would do it in strings that were made up of at least a hundred coins and sometimes a thousand coins. I mean, it doesn't seem like a great way to walk around on the road with hundreds or thousands of coins and a string on your back and, you know, both for your poor back and because, hello, thieves, they can hear you coming, but to each his own, also, the merchants only counted the chuan or diom that were presented to them, so someone could easily take a few off from each and make a profit, or they could even put fake coins in between the real ones and no one would be the wiser. So I guess trust was a big thing back then. Number nine, Jesus' younger brother, Hong Hui Quan, a young man from Wangdong, started having some very strange and unexplicable visions because he couldn't find another explanation for them, he started believing and declaring he was the younger brother of Jesus. Yes, the Jesus we all know, the Jesus, Jesus Christ. He said in his visions, he saw Christ sending him on a mission to clear China of demonic forces that was controlling them. It sounds like something no one would fall for, but people started believing in him and following him. And soon enough, he gathered armies and conquered large parts of China. Number 10, the mystery of Sanxing Dui. The lost civilizations are a topic that's always interesting to a lot of people, and especially those who like to go overboard with their theories about aliens, strange creatures, ghosts, zombies, whatever other weird thing you want to put on the list. But this time, with this lost civilization, there's actual proof it existed, but it still remains a mystery as to how and why it was lost. The site where the artifacts were found was called Sanxing Dui, and it was discovered in 1929. But it wasn't until 1986 that archaeologists started really digging. Sorry, it's a pun. I couldn't pass it up. While it was clear that the Sanxingdui civilization was superbly rich and complex from the findings, there's absolutely no written records about it at all. And there you have it for today. These were the top 10 craziest things that ancient imperial China did. Now it's time to hear from you. 
Which one shocked you the most and why? Let us know in the comments, and if you haven't already, hey, go ahead, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and if you like this video, that helps support us as well. We'll see you next time.